Welcome back to another Spring Boot GraphQL tutorial and in this episode it's going to be an extended GraphQL data loader episode and if you want to watch the first part um, go back to the series and it's number 23 and in this part we're going to address a, a common problem with data loaders so if you remember back to the code I'll quickly walk you through the data loader what we do is in our balance resolver, we load the bank account ID into the data loader. This data loader, what it does is it collects a set of bank account IDs and provides the set into the get balance for service, which can then execute that batch request. The results are then sent back and we return a map with the ID mapped to the result. So the ID of the bank account of the retrieved data to the result. This then is sent back through the executor and this executes in another thread in our thread pool from the compatible feature. And then this is returned from the resolver. So in between here, the, the data loader library will actually select out uh, the, the result based on the ID passed in here. So the correct data is returned or null is returned if there's no entry in the map. Now, a common use case of a data loader is that we don't just want to pass the ID because sometimes inside here we need more than the ID to perform or how to calculate this final value. An example of that would be once we call this whatever service to get the balance, well maybe we need to multiply the balance by two for an example, and two is actually a field in the bank account here. So in order to perform that logic, we would have to provide the bank account somehow into the data loader so it can then get the, the value from the bank account and multiply it by the, the value retrieved from the service and we can send that back. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do that and we're gonna do that through the data loader key context. So inside here, when you load a value, you can actually specify another parameter. So if you come here and you look at the docs, you can load the object as a key context and the key. And this way we stay very performant because we still pass a small key, which is very, I don't know, has a good hash code. So it's going to be looked up super quick. And we can pass the object as a secondary, like, yeah, it's going to be its its twin coming with it. So in here, let's pass in the bank account. So now we load the bank account ID, map to a bank account. And inside the registry factory, we need to transform this data loader, map data loader into, or actually it's the parameter, we need to transfer this into this guy here. Or sorry, not this guy, we need the context. So, Map data loader, but data loader options. Is it data loader options? Sorry, I haven't done this in a while. Let me just search data loader options. No, it's not this guy, it's the environment. So, map data loader. Oh. Context, pass loop function with context. So let's do it here. Let's have we look here. Batch loop with context. And in here we need the batch loader environment. So this is the guy here. So we copy this. Undo that. It's been a while since I've done this, so excuse my rustiness. And now we have the environment in here. What we need to do is actually get the the key contexts with the IDs. And in here, what we can do is say environment.get key contexts. But as you can see, this returns a map, unfortunately, of object object. But we know that the keys of of the key context will actually be the keys passed in. So that's the bank account IDs. And the objects are going to be the bank account. So what we, we're going to have to do is something not nice, but yeah, we have to in this case. And we're going to cast this to a simple map. Um, we do not pass the generics here. 
And then what we do is we're going to transform the balance method to a map of UUID to a bank account. And therefore we don't have any, or we're going to basically hard, hard code and cast that type across. So you may want to suppress the warnings here or have an exclusion on your like sonar analysis that you're actually doing this because unfortunately it's not the nicest. So we can disregard bank account IDs now. So let's go ahead and just make this week a prettier, remove these arguments. And then I can save that. So now we have the, the context coming across and it, now we have the bank account IDs or the bank accounts mapped to bank account IDs. So in here, now you can go ahead and get your bank accounts. So for every, so you can, if you want to get the IDs, you say bank account IDs dot key context. And you get that from key set. So key set, this would be the IDs. So we can get IDs, request the balance for IDs. And then from the results coming back, based on balance response, you will have to look into or validate, let's say, or whatever it is you have to do, validate with the bank account IDs. So that's like a post, it's like a step to logic. So hopefully you guys get this and understand the problem and now how you can solve it, so how you can enrich the data coming back with just this ID with the actual context, which is the bank account. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let me actually start this and run this to actually show you that it works. So I'll restart that in debug mode. Let's pop over here, go to playground, let's play that across, and here we need to add in balance is null, and let's put a wee breakpoint here. And here you can see bank account IDs is one, and of course it's going to be the ID mapped to the bank account, so df and df here. So there you go guys, that's how you can probably get that across and solve that nice problem. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.